There's a lot going on in real estate today and this monthly update, we're going to be covering what's happening with property prices, supply levels, demand and some of the recent announcements from government. So let's move my face and jump straight in. So here's the most recent CoreLogic data and the, the article, the headline tells you everything. Um, we've just seen the strongest monthly growth since November 2001. Basically, we have seen a third consecutive monthly rise um, and it's starting to accelerate sharply in the month of May. In February, it did rise a little bit, but um, it was only marginal. That's what they say they found a fall. So it's basically four monthly rises. And the recovery is being led mostly by Sydney, and in particular, it's the top part of Sydney's market. So home values have risen by 4.8%, or the equivalent of 50 grand lift to the median dwelling price. So if you just own an average home in Sydney, you've made $50,000 over the past three months. Not bad. Um, a lot of people would be happy with that kind of return. Brisbane performing well, so is Perth. Um, let's keep going down here. So one thing that is consistent, you're going to hear me say this a lot, is persistently low levels of available housing supply um, running up against housing demand. So there is normal or above normal levels of demand, people wanting to buy properties, and there's just not a lot of stock. Advertised listings have been trending lower. Um, and you can see here inventory levels about 15.3% lower than they were same time last year and 24.4% below the previous five-year average for this time last year. So 20, nearly 25% less than the five-year average for where we are in the market right now, which is pretty crazy because ordinarily, um, you know, the colder months are low levels of stock. So we're, we're just really, really low levels of stock. Now, with short supply for housing, buyers are becoming competitive and there's this sense of FOMO creeping into the market. If you are out there looking for your own home or looking to buy property, you're probably seeing and feeling that. You're doing your realestate.com and domain searches and just know, noticing the same properties on the market and no fresh listings. And that's what's providing a floor and now pushing some price growth. You can see here the combined capitals is where we're seeing most of the growth. Um, the regional cities or the regional markets are seeing a little bit of growth, but nowhere near as strong as the capital cities. Okay. Now, this is what I was saying earlier. The premium housing in Sydney has continued to lead the recovery. Um, it dropped the hardest, but now it's starting to rise the fastest. And that's pretty normal at the top end of the market. It's a bit more volatile. You get the biggest growth, but then you also see some of the largest drops as well. It's grown by 5.6%. So stuff that's kind of over 2 million bucks has grown by 5.6%. So to give you some context of that, that's about $100,000 in growth. Um, let's keep on going down here. Okay. Now, let's move over to the next report. Will home buyers be spoiled for choice in 2023? This report is basically saying that um, housing supply, again, is really, really low, and that's why we're seeing this growth in the market. But ordinarily, when you see uh, price growth in the market, that's when you also see an increase in listings. Um, and historical data suggests that a 2% bump in new listings this calendar year. This is basically off the back of saying that the whole report goes on to say that if we continue to grow at the rate that we are, which is about on average a half a percent per month, by the end of this year, um, we would have grown by about, um, about, about 3%. excuse me, 4%. Um, if we were to rise at half a percent per month, it would increase by about 4%. And then this would then equate to about a 2% increase in the total listings. But both of those things are uncertain. Going back into the previous part of the report here, this is to give you a visual representation of what's happening with supply. This is the monthly total listings, and then that's the decade average. 
So decade average is that dotted line just there. So it should be about 200,000 listings um, available monthly. Uh, we're currently at about 140 odd thousand. So we're well under our decade average, um, which is scary considering there's more people in the country than there was a decade ago. Um, the other thing to look at here is the monthly volume of new listings by year nationally. You can see here, we're just here, national home values bottomed out at 9.1% in April 2022. And since then, we've basically seen a massive plummet to the amount of stock that's on the market. So the last time we saw these kind of numbers was 2020, where it really bottomed out but we're well below the five-year averages. There's just simply no stock on the market. Thank you, Eliza Owen, for that report. So I want to just show you this is a, a really interesting or oh, funny video. Uh, Philip Lowe or Governor Philip Lowe, um, he, he's a governor of the RBA and he's talking about the fact that there is persistently low stock in the market. Interest rates are high. Housing costs are really high. Um, and because there's low levels of stock and because of the rental market is so, so tight, um, in, uh, rents keep on increasing a lot as well. And his solution, he recognizes there's low levels of stock, he recognizes that prices are going to keep on increasing, is this. I don't know if you heard that, but basically he's saying that, hey, prices are going to keep on increasing and people are just going to have to live with mum and dad for longer and or go and get housemates to, to, to sleep and live in that, um, that spare office that you currently got. So there is a, 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 it's recognized that we're in a dire straits. Where am I leading to with all this? I want this, this, I really want to focus on where the opportunities are and what it means for you. And I just really want to actually validate the fact that there is a shortage as well, because it's very widely recognized. And there's still people out there that don't believe that. So here we go. We can't just tax our way out of the Australian dream. Basically, this report is talking about, um, you know, the government tries all different initiatives, new tax initiatives, to incentivize people to come into the market and to encourage new supply. But uh, Dr. Richards here reports that um, shows that in 20 years since 2001, the supply of new homes grew by 17% above the rate of population. So typically our supply is growing about 17% above population. In the following two decades, it grew at just 4% above population growth which meant that we've got a missing about 1.3 million homes. That's why things are so tight right now. Um, he goes on to talk about the fact that where the current controls or the current government is talking about trying to do rent control and all these different initiatives, but basically we need to build more homes. And he goes on to say that basically there's, there's a huge missing middle. So for all of you, um, the missing middle is effectively townhouses, more um, more lower density stock. And you can achieve these townhouses and lower density stock is or low rise apartments through um, urban or th through development in the major metro hubs. So here in high desirable uh, inner city locations close to the CBD. Now, what they're saying is it's very difficult for councils to actually go and do that, to redevelop parts of the market because of nimbyism. Nimbyism is not in my neighborhood. So there's a whole bunch of people living in these really nice areas or in, in um, beautiful areas saying, fuck your development. We don't want you to be developing your townhouse. We don't want you to be developing low-rise um, residential apartments near us. And that is causing, it's making it very, very difficult for councils to release new stock onto the market. And because there's no new stock, rents keep on increasing, housing prices increase. So normally that big house that's on a thousand square meters, you'd be able to cut it up, maybe do actually a thousand square meters, 200 square meters per townhouse is a very um, 
you know, loose rule, uh, that means you should be able to put five townhouses. And depending on the zoning, maybe you can do, you know, 20 to 50 apartments. This is very, very loose numbers. But the point remains that there's these homes that are out there and people are living in houses that they can cut up, but neighbours are saying no, councils then take the same um, stance and it's very difficult for us to then cut up and make the city landscape or Sydney, Melbourne, these areas are a lot more dense. Let's continue. Housing pipeline shrinks as apartment approvals plummet. This is just really adding to that narrative or what's what we're seeing in the market. So here, approvals for new apartments, townhouses and semi-detached homes dropped almost 17% to an adjusted number of 3,500 in April, the lowest point since January 2012. Let's just sit on that for a second. The amount of approvals is at its lowest point since more than a decade ago. The country is growing faster than it ever has. We've got 700,000 migrants coming into the country and we are not, and we're le less than 17% down than where we normally are and we're at the lowest point since nearly a decade ago, which is crazy. Um, we're also seeing a decrease in the amount of um, single-family homes as well. So it's not just apartments. And basically, you know, we're in for drama. A sharp downturn is underway, which is set to extend into 2024. We expect it to take until the back end of 2024 before the market pressure guides um, dwelling approvals back into growth. Now, part of this is what they're talking about here is it's very difficult, one, to get the approvals because of nimbyism, two, because councils are basically backlogged, um, three, a lot of people working from home and some inefficiencies in government, but four, it's also just finding builders to build it and because the cost of construction is so high. So there's basically a bit of a perfect storm currently where builders aren't out there building stuff. A lot of them have gone broke. And then also there's just cost too much to go and build new um, apartments and houses, townhouses out there. So what's the take from all of this? What's the take from all this? For all of you home buyers out there, um, there's no better time than the present to get into the market. Um, it just doesn't really seem like we're going to be seeing a massive crash that people expect because of that mate May mortgage cliff or fixed rate mortgage cliff. It feels like people are holding on to their mortgages. A lot of people are rate lock stuck into their mortgage, but they're also scared to get out and sell their property because it means they're going to get to the rental market and there's just no available rents or nothing for them to go and rent anymore. The other thing is for all of you people or would be investors or potential investors, now is a great time to be getting into the market. Go and find a good piece of real estate because in all likelihood, over the next 24 to 36 months, we're going to see some growth in the market because of a few things. It's supply and demand. We've got very low levels of supply. It's difficult for people to develop, start, or develop new homes at the moment. And... We've got a huge amount of people coming into the country. That's the demand. Now, if you're out there looking for new properties, or it doesn't have to be new, but any type of property, go and look in those markets where you've got some other good, strong demand generators, where you've got investments in infrastructure, that lives, uh, people's lives are going to get better. Where you're going to see a huge amount of growth is at a point, interest rates will hit a ceiling. They will stop. And as soon as we start to see rate cuts again, we're going to see more demand come into the market with already persistently low stock. And that's where we're going to see some really strong price growth. Anyways, thanks for staying tuned. Happy hunting, everybody. Good luck with your next uh, purchase. And if you've got any questions, reach out and let me know. I'll catch you all later.